Shimai. Today we're going to have a look at this plant here, the dock or dock leaf. It's uh, in this case it's the broadleaf dock and actually uh, a colleague of mine, her daughter Emily, was desperate to, to find out some more information about docks um, because it's very common, we all recognise it, but I'm not sure how much we actually know about it. So this one here, the broadleaf dock, um, is Rumex obtusifolia folius um, and in Welsh is dial tavel um, and just as an aside there's a fantastic uh, Welsh songstress um, Gwyneth Glynn who has done a song called dial tavel which is well worth a well worth a listen um, anyway docks they're very very common I mean incredibly common and there's many different types of species of dock and there's the two main one, main ones we've already said this is the broadleaf dock um, or there's the um, uh, the curly dock, which has a fantastic Latin name, which is Rumex crispus, um, for the simple reason it has like a crispy curly um, surround to it. And like I say, they're very common native, upright, perennial, it'll come every year these will. Um, and actually they, they're considered, because they grow so profusely and, and they will shade out other plants, they are con, um, considered to be injurious, which means a harmful weed. There's only, I think, about five or seven um, uh, injurious weeds in Britain, and this being one of them. And it'll grow in fields and waste grounds and hedgerows and pretty much anywhere where um, they're given a chance to grow. It's these leaves though that are most recognisable with the dock because they are so big and we, we've known them um, from being young. Um, but they're massive. I mean, these are up to 30 centimetres long and about 15 centimetres wide. And you can tell the, the shapes vary, but they're mostly oval with this sort of tip, um, the sort of rounded over a bit. And they have this wavy edge to them like that. Now, the curly dock has narrower leaves. Um, Again, can have this red sort of streak up through the through the leaf, um, but narrower and much more wavy margin to it, much sort of um, much crinklier. Hence the the Latin name, the the Rumex crispus. It's sort of crispy edge to it. Now, as we've said. Docks are um, a problem. They are one of these injurious weeds, and it's because of this idea that um, they, they just spread so readily. And the taproot, they have a massive taproot that actually goes incredibly deep. And even if you chop off um, the, the dock, it can still regenerate from that taproot. Um, and it's, I've read somewhere that the taproot can actually go 90 centimetres deep. Um, it's incredible to think that that's nearly a metre deep this taproot can go and it will regenerate from that. So docks will flower around about June to October. There's quite a long flowering period actually. Um, and they're these loose spikes you can just see behind my hand here. And at the base of them, I don't know if you can just make out these leaves at the bottom of the flower spikes there's these these smaller leaves um, now interestingly these flowers once they turn into the seed they, they usually dry and they go sort of quite crispy and you can strip them off with your hand if you wanted but I'd read that these seeds can last in, and survive in the soil for up to 50 years so you can see why um, docks can be a bit of a problem Despite the issues of this being an injurious weed, um, docks, as all wild plants, have their benefits. Now, 30 or more fungi can actually survive on docks, and it's a food for caterpillars, um, and in fact, it's, it's the food of the caterpillar of the small copper butterfly. And, in, oh, you can't see it now, but there was um, a ladybird up on there uh, a little bit earlier, so he's obviously scuttled away to safety. Um, and the young leaves and uh, stems and seeds can be eaten and the seeds are an important food source for winter wildlife for birds and mice and, and actually I've, I've read as well that um, the seeds that come on onto the docks can be eaten by deer as well grazing deer in the past docks were used um, medicinally so they were used as a medicine to purify the blood to heal bruises and treat coughs um, it was also said that they were placed these big leaves because they they believed to have a cooling and soothing effect would be placed into the shoes um, placed into shoes to sort of 
cool your feet and on hot summer days. Also because of the size, um, they used to be used to wrap cheese and butter and that's another one of the names that's given to these is the butter dock because obviously they were used to wrap cheese um, and butter. I suppose a good size to them. But the main thing we recognise dock leaves for, as young Emily has suggested, is this idea that it will relieve the pain of a nettle sting. Um, now normally just pulling one off and rubbing it doesn't have much effect and any plants like that, what you need to do is, is get to the actual juices inside. So if you were going to use it to ease a, a nettle sting, you break it off and crush it up to get the juice out and then rub it onto the stings. Um, and part of the reason people believe that they, they help with nettle stings is because they generally nearly always grow near patches of nettles. And people in the past have put two and two together, I guess, and said, well, okay, if uh, nettles sting, docks will soothe you. And there was a, a, a saying um, back many years ago that in dock, out nettle. Don't let the blood settle. So in other words, if you got stung by a nettle, you needed to act quickly with a dock and you break it off and you crush it up and you rub it on the nettle sting and the nettle sting would soothe and ease and, and it would be gone. Um, but interestingly, modern science actually believes that docks don't work for nettle stings. Um, it's a difficult one because there's plenty of people who, who will say that docks work for them. So it's whatever works for you, but I mean, I still uh, use, and, and as I said in my, my video on um, plantain, I use plantains. I find them to be very effective and again, crushed up, rubbed onto a sting and it will, and it will soothe and ease it. But, um, but this is what we all know from, from being younger is that quick, get a dock leaf and put it on. And, and in some parts of the country, people would say rather than crush it up, you'd spit on it and rub it on. But like I say, this tends to be the go-to for, uh, for fixing and soothing a nettle sting. So there we go, the dock. Uh, very common, very easy to find and like I say, whether you use it for, for cooling your feet or whether you use it for, uh, for soothing those stinging nettle stings and in fact I've just knelt on one now and I've got one stung on my knee so I'll, uh, I'll see if it works now but there we go, easy to find, good time to go out and find it now so good luck.